Well, I, I know a thing or two about pits. <laughs> that is true, Mr. Pitt. <laughs> kind of like some... <laughs> I can't say it, never mind. I can't go you there. can't. I can't go there. <laughs> This show's gonna have nothing but spoilers. What's up, listeners and viewers? And welcome to this special episode of the Book of Boba Fett Review. I am joined today by another Boba Fett. Hello, Chris Cavazos. Hello, everybody. Uh, are you wearing the same helmet I am, Efraim? Who is Efraim? Oh my god, everybody, I want to welcome you all to the Ethan Sunny. Special guest, Boba Fett special, The Book of Boba, episode one. Thank um, you, Mr. Cavazos, for inviting me to your show. Um, I usually well, I don't... It's your show, first of all. Second of all, um, I'm going to take this off. It's a little bit annoying. Are you going to keep yours on? Are you going to take it off? Or what are you going to do? What are you talking about? I am Boba Fett. Ephraim, you're, uh, I think uh, you're not Boba Fett. No, I am Boba Fett. Dude, take off your helmet, bro. Seriously. No, 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 no. Se- seriously, I am Boba Fett. Are we going to do this the entire time? I am Boba Fett. Okay. Mr. Fett, do you know why we're here? We are here today because you've graciously asked me to be on this small podcast of a smeagering show to talk about the new episode of The Book of Boba Fett that recently um, appeared on Disney+. Plus. By the way, have you seen my new show, The Book of Fett? The Book of Boba Fett, yes, I, I saw it. I believe episode one came out uh, at three in the morning or two in the morning last night, uh, December 29th. 2021 and what were your thoughts of of the show it had it's a, shut a, your a, mouth the show was great well of course you're in it mr fett i know i'm i'm still waiting to see if they're gonna give me an oscar this year but but you're a tv show i don't think they give out oscars i think it's emmys no don't question me don't quite don't you ever question me because you're the star of the show you're legally required to be here because i am the star of the show and because mickey mouse has control over what I do, what I say, my rights, my appearance, everything down to the way I take a piss. I'm gonna be ridiculous, be ridiculous. All right, fine. Anyways, I'll continue as if normal. Um, so, uh- Wait a second, wait, let's, let's, the producer's telling me there's nothing normal about you. Efrain, you're the producer. This is your show. What is this guy talking about? I'm hey, Boba Fett. I usually don't do personal appearances, however, my agent is making me do the rounds because of the promotion of the show. So I'm legally required to be here. So how do you get paid? Do you get paid in Republic credits? Or are you taking cash or? What type of question is this? I thought I, I, I was brought on here to talk about my show. And, and here, here you are getting in, in, into my financial situation. I'm a galactic bounty hunter. Do you think I well, choose to be a galactic bounty hunter because I have enough well, money think, sitting in an account the, someplace? The no, I'm audience, struggling sister. just like everybody else, trying to make ends meet, collect bounties so I can make a living like everybody else. Let's talk about the book how, how of Boba Fett. How about you remove Boba that helmet, Fett. sir, and show your face to our listeners? Let's talk about the book of Boba how Fett and how it starts that off. Helmet and we show everybody who you really are underneath that thing. I am really Boba Fett. Okay, Mr. Fett, we're just gonna go through the show. Uh, let's just start off, I guess, with a flashback from where we left off. We left off in the Mandalorian with you taking over Jabba's uh, crime syndicate from Bib Fortuna. And, but the show starts off with a flashback of you in a back to tank, and then it goes directly to you in the Starlight pit. Is that correct? I'm legally required to be here. Next question. And how did you get into that Starlight pit again? It was a very traumatizing story for me, but let me start off. First, you all know that these Mandalorian packs are known, jet packs are prone to malfunction, right? I guess, I'd never heard of that, but okay. So no, I'm, there, I'm getting ready right? to- I'll take your word for it. I'm getting ready there to torch up Luke Skywalker, right? And what do you know? What do you freaking know? That bloody Han Solo backs up right into me, hits my jetpack. I go flying into the air, into the Sarlacc pit to be digested for a thousand years. So that's where we find you. Is you're in the middle of a, you know, a pit, a Sarlacc pit. I guess you're in his stomach, and you use a a stormtrooper's oxygen, I guess, to breathe and then to light your your arm cannon, right? Your flamethrower. That's correct. For a thousand years, I, I, I faced digestion, found the whole, my whole life just flashed before my eyes, grabbed my flame, trusty flamethrower, grabbed it from the stormtrooper. 
By the way, do you know how that stormtrooper got in there? Well, I mean, I'm just assuming, I mean, the Empire had been on Tatooine for a long time. So I'm assuming he just fell in, or it could have been the Empire, you know, went to Jabba and said, hey, you owe us tribute or whatever. You owe us respect. And he, Jabba threw him in the pit. That's what I think probably happened. I think we might get some more backstory later on on how that stormtrooper fell into the Sarlacc pit. But anyway... I grab his oxygen, flame my way out, crawl out, uh, find myself climbing out of the Sarlacc pit, covered in sand, crawling on the floor, and now I lay there in my hour of need, needing help. Well, I noticed a couple of things. Does a Sarlacc pit add, you know, pounds or like weight or kilograms or whatever, however you, you weigh things in the Star Wars universe? What are you trying to say? you seem to have gained, you know, 25, 50 pounds. You do what you have to do when you're trapped in the belly of a Sarlacc. So you're eating like you're like there's a buffet down there? Like you're at the, the, the Lynn's buffet? You do what you gotta do. You know, you're just scrummaging around. Maybe you have a finger, a toe. You know, you, you you say you're gonna have one, but there's nothing down there to do. You get a little bored. You say, you know what? Um, I'm gonna stress eat a little bit and, and you gain some weight. Well, I know it's the one cool thing though, besides your obvious weight gain, you know, was uh, your armor looked really neat covered in, in sand when you escaped. And it looked a lot like uh, some of the old comics. That's right. A lot of fan service in this episode. And so at that point, you're kind of, you're burned. Are, are you, you know, you think you're burned from the acid of the, the Sarlacc pit? Or did you heat your body up to try to escape? Or why do you think you got burned? I'm sitting there in a valley full of acid, just slowly acidying away. Uh, what do you think's going to happen? Mr. Science? Is, is a sitting a word? A sitting is, is a word. Is that a Star Wars word that I've never heard? No, it's a science word. A, a sitting. It's okay. called science. You're, you're, you come out, you're scarred, you're, you're obviously exhausted, and the Jawas proceed to show up and, and basically steal your armor and leave you for dead. How did that make you feel? Made me feel ashamed, made me feel dirty. I mean, of all the Star Wars characters to take me down, you know, it, 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 it wasn't a Wookiee, it wasn't Mace Windu, it wasn't a Stormtrooper, it was a Jawa. So what happens next, I'm lying there, and who comes along to help and save me but the Sand People? Can, wait, hold on. I believe, sir, that is an offensive term. Can we still call them sand the people? proper term in 2021 is Tusken Raider. Tusken Raider. That Tus I'm sorry. Sand I'm so people is an offensive term. I do not appreciate that. I am 129th sand person. Wait a second. Is Tusken Raider better than sand people? I believe it is, sir. Because in one, you're a sand person. But in the other term, you're a raider. I'm just telling you that's a pre preferred nomenclature. You're very woke. You're very woke. So um, I, I, tr I try to be. So the, the Tusken Raiders come out and we don't know, are these the same Tusken Raider tribe from Star Wars episode four? And what do you mean by that? What, what do you mean? What, what is that reference there for the listeners that might not be aware? I mean, if you notice the sand people in episode four, the first Star Wars movie created in 1977, the sand people are wearing brown uniforms, right? The sound people that come and rescue me are wearing black uniforms. What does and that with mean? with a little bit of red, if you notice that. They had some red. They did. Side. So what does that mean? What are they alluding to? Is this a different tribe? Are they more violent than the sand people we saw in episode four of New Hope? And, well, they didn't look like the, the tribe that Anakin killed because they had those huts. Like, remember, they were more like kind of sand huts. These were more like tents. That's so they were definitely not that tribe as well. That's correct. Are they a more violent or more likable sand people? I guess that's to be found out. You don't want to give us any spoilers for future episodes. Okay, so so all of a sudden, I'm their prisoner. They take me as a prisoner. And now there's some foreshadowing here. I'm tied up. I'm their prisoner. And the performance I give is one from... That classic movie most people might have seen called Dances with Wolves. So you're going native is what you're saying? Well, I am the captured Kevin Costner in this episode. Far more handsome. Far more handsome. So they capture me, right? I, I plan a daring escape that doesn't work. They recapture me. I get hit in the face by a little boy. A little boy sand person. But I noticed there, you didn't attack the little boy when you tried to escape. You kind of looked at him and you, you kind of held back. Yes. What was that? Well, that kind of goes outside my character, right? 
from the other Star Wars movies, I'm a certified badass, right? Mm -hmm. I do whatever's in my best own interest. So at this point, I don't hit the little boy. So it's is it questionable. You're looking, is it because uh, you're matured or is it like you felt bad for the kid or what was that? Well, at this oh, point, it seems like my time in the Sarlacc pit might have melted my cold heart. And so, so you decide to not hit the little boy, you escape and they actually recapture you. They recapture me, take me back, beat my ass. Well, that guy ratted you out, the, the little alien guy. I think it's a, a Rodan or something like that. I'm not familiar with, with the name of that uh, species. Ah, oh, that punk. That punk. Rats me out, right? We could have escaped. I said, hey, buddy, you know, we're here. There's this crazy dog in front of us. I just kicked the dog's ass. Let's escape. Let's run away. And that jerk, he just says, you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell on you. So he starts teletating around. He tells on me, they come and they beat my ass again, which just proves I've had it right all along. You got to do this crap solo, you know? There is no team you effort. You mean like Han solo? What? Oh, sorry. Is that, is that along with the Mace Windu? Is that like a name <sighs> that I should not refer to as well? Um, the little sand person. You went on a little adventure with him. I did. I go and at this point he has me digging and searching for for agua. For our non-Spanish speaking people, that means water. So so after that point, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. And you know that that, that other jerk that was telling on me? The Rodian or whatever? He finds a monster and the monster jumps out. Did you notice the monster looked a little bit like Goro from uh, Mortal Kombat? It did. It did look a little bit like Goro, which also raises some type of copyright and trademark infringement um, issues that the show might have to uh, fight later. But, it, but, but did you notice the, the reference on how I killed that monster? I noticed that you may have stolen a, a, um, a move from Slave Leia by choking him out like, you know, Jabba. Exactly. That's what I loved. John Farvo, Dave Filoni, two great guys, went out, did some fan service there. I could have killed the monster with a blaster. I could have impaled him with an object like Luke, but no, they did some fan service there, Chris. Yeah, I noticed that. It's 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 uh something that stood out to me right away. I was like, this guy just took him down just like Leia killed Jabba. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of good fan service. So where do you think the show is going to go next? Well, um, I guess the episode, that, that flashback ends with you returning to the, with a child. Was a child taking credit for your victory? Or was he telling the story of your victory? Well, with the limited sand person knowledge I know, it, sound, it looked like he was definitely taking, uh, taking my victory and uh, pawning it off as his own. Except that one warrior, I think he kind of realized right away there's no way this kid killed this, this creature. Exactly. I think that dude is the chieftain. I think the chieftain saw in my eyes and said this, I was the one that killed him. And so they, you're going to continue, I guess, with that story, I guess, for the future for your question is the, the Dances the Wolf story shall continue. He's going to become a member. You're going to become a member of the tribe. Maybe start learning some Tuscan skills, speaking the language. Exactly. That's, I, it, I, that's I, my prediction. I think that's what's going to happen. I think that the story is going to progress. And even the, the title, the Book of Fett, right? When we know most movies where they call stuff books, it usually refers to prophets. So maybe at this point, they're gonna have my character be more of a prophet for the Star Wars universe, making it bigger and expanding. Well, I thought the more interesting title was the actual title of the episode. Did you catch that, Mr. Fett? No, what was the title? It's called uh, A Stranger in a Strange Land. And what did that mean? What did well, that clearly, suggest to you? Well, a couple of things. It's Stranger in a Strange Land is a Bible verse, right? It was Moses whenever he was in Egypt again, he felt out of place. Um, there's also a book with the same title where uh, the guy was a Martian here on Earth. In your case, you're uh, a Mandalorian clone in a strange place. You don't belong with the Tusken Raiders, so you're going to learn their ways. Because I noticed you were in a back to tank. What's going on there? Well, and for the people out there, a back to tank is a tank that. You go in there and you use it to heal yourself. So why are you healing yourself? Is that from the scars? Well, it seems like it's a nod to uh, the Empire Strikes Back when we saw Luke in a back of tank healing well, himself. His father in a back of tank at one point as well. So it looks like I'm using 
the back of tank to regenerate from the scarring I received from the Sarlacc pit. Mm. And I noticed that played a role later, uh, a little bit of a role later on in the show towards the end. Oh yeah, you, you know, I, I gained some weight. I'm, I'm a little like elderly, so got involved in a little street brawl. You know, the mayor trying to take me out. Uh, got a little winded, a little uh, beat up. So uh, they had to take me Wait, back. So, you, you, so I guess we're jumping ahead, but you ended up getting in a conflict with some, again, these guys look like Sub-Zero, Ermac, ninja looking dudes, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right, carrying shields. And you predict, you think that so those are the mayors, hitmen or whatever? Definitely, no doubt, no doubt. I feel like it's too um, it was too obvious that it would be his hitmen. I mean, I'm I'm looking on the planet, looking left and right. Who else has it in for me? I mean, the mayor was the only dude that came to me wanting me to pay tribute to him. I said, no, mayor, I'm not paying tribute to you. Got a little butt hurt. His little henchman said, ah, we'll, we'll be talking to you later. So looks like they made good on their promise. Well, I correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Fett, but I believe you said that the Trandoshan complimented you, but that even when a Trandoshan compliments you, you can take it as a threat. So you don't believe it was a Trandoshan. And the Trandoshan's a lizard looking dude, just for the record. No, no. I, I believe the mayor may or may not be one of the holdoving huts. Oh, so you think the mayor's a hut? It has to be a hut. I think it's a Trandoshan. Why? The, the mayor is more like the sniveling classic politician in Star Wars that is literally just there trying to, you know, strut like a peacock, show his feathers. But if it were to go down, he's not going to have anything. The Trandoshan, I think, is the bigger threat they're more involved in the underworld um i'm sure jo uh you mr fett you've crossed trandoshans in the past um but we'll see i guess right you know what what they say don't ever trust the transdoshan the only well, good trying to say. the only good transdoshan is a taze transdoshan <laughs> well because remember the trandoshans also were chasing after your buddy over there the mandalorian and mandalorian season one they were trying to capture uh, Baby Yoda Grogu. That's right. That's right. And maybe within this story, we might find some more information on what happened to old Baby Yoda. You don't think they're going to say that for the Mandalorian? I think right now with the Mandalorian, I think they're entering their, their last season. So they're going to have to expand the universe somewhat. And let's face it. Um, I don't know. Can, can I say this? Yeah, they're giving me the green light to say this. Uh, they should really stay away from making any more Star Wars movies for a while. What's that movie, The Force Awakens? Did you see that? That was okay. It was not terrible. Yeah, the only force it awakened in me was my gastritis. <laughs> <laughs> so then what did you think of of, of the other one? Uh, what is it called? The Last Jedi. Let's just say... Someone gave you a, uh, a portrait of the Mona Lisa, right? And let's just say someone stuck their finger in poop and then drew a mustache on the Mona Lisa. How would that make you feel? Yeah, I got you. I'm not a big fan of the Mona Lisa, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. It would, it would yeah, you're, you're ruining great art. So you're saying literally they put, they gave Star Wars their dirty Sanchez is what you're trying to say. Exactly. So what do you think um, episode number two is going to bring? At the end of the episode, they, they drug you into the back of the tank, I guess, because you're still not 100%. You still have, obviously, some weaknesses. Um, maybe your lungs are damaged from the, from the Sarlacc pit, from the burns. So I think that's going to be something that's going to play throughout the series. Obviously, they caught one of those ninja guys, the Sub-Zero guys, to interrogate him. Well, Fennec did. Um, so that will be touched on, and I think it's just going to be the mystery of of who that is initially, of who the, was it the mayor, was it the Trandoshans? And um, of course you consolidate more power. And on the other end is like you said, you becoming going native with with the Kevin Cosners of, of the Tuscan Raiders. So overall, we've been waiting a very long time for the book of Fett. It's been about three years in production. What were your overall thoughts? Um, very positive. Um, the only negative side is that I feel like I was just too excited, but um, I'm interested to see where it goes. They had some fan service. Um, whenever he punches the glove out of the sand was, was from the EU, from the Expanded Universe. So I'm, I'm overall, I'm excited. I, I think it was very good. I would give it a, a good 8 out of 10. 